Now, there are a lot of myths that were thrown at us from a lot of different car companies. All batteries will need to be the same, and as a result of that, it will never happen. We don't see a Nissan battery going into a Toyota car anytime soon. We actually don't even see a Toyota battery going into a Nissan car anytime soon. Most car companies will have their own batteries, and they will go back to the same kind of car. And we will need to stock three, four, five, seven different types of batteries, much like gas stations stock multiple different types of gasoline when you go into a gas station. There was another myth that was thrown at us recently that you have to be really careful switching batteries in the middle of the rain can be very dangerous. We forgot about what happens when a match falls into a bit of oil. I guess that's not dangerous anymore. And what you'll see is that the reality is the battery could actually get in the middle of the water and nothing will happen to it as a result of the fact that all the batteries are sealed in a box made of metal that doesn't have any penetration capability to any water whatsoever. It is designed for safety. And my belief is once we see this deployed around the world, most people will ask the question, why did we put gasoline, unsafe liquid, in the middle of our cities? Makes no sense. We also hear that it's too expensive, and so I have great news for you. The cost of battery plus electrons is cheaper than oil. If oil is not too expensive, electric is cheaper. So what are we showing today? The news of the day is we have the first deployable mass exchange system that can do an exchange on a car in less than a minute, that can make sure you go out of a station in less time than it took you to go on and fill up gasoline. We've been running this machine now for a few weeks. Hopefully the demo gods will be with us because we haven't had a failure, which means something is bound to happen today. Um, but you will see the device working. You'll see it exchanging batteries on an ongoing basis. You'll see people driving the car. And you'll see a great milestone because I believe this actually was the last element of technology that was required in order to prove that this system is scalable and can be robust and can be the solution for zero emission vehicles. Why do you see it in Japan? Because of the invitation from this gentleman. We wouldn't have been in Japan unless the Ministry of Environment would have invited us, had been so graceful in its invitation, and has been so welcoming in demonstrating this to the entire industry which is gathered here today. There are very few companies that have the privilege of being invited into Japan, and there are very few countries that have the foresight of inviting foreign companies to show and demonstrate technologies early on to their local industry. And I believe this vision and foresight can pay back to the entire Japanese car industry if it's adopted. I believe that this demonstration shows the path towards certain segments that cannot go electric unless you use this technology. For example, China recently announced that it will convert its taxis to electric by putting an incentive in an order of magnitude of 1 million yen on every electric taxi about $10,000, $9,000 worth of incentive on every electric taxi in China. There is no reason why Japanese taxis cannot go electric. And if Japanese taxis go electric, every person who comes into Tokyo or Yokohama or any other city in Japan will be able to actually ride in an electric car without needing to commit to it before they see it working. And so we believe this is a great demonstration day, which is the first step and maybe, maybe, just maybe, in 2020, 2020, when you read an encyclopedia, probably on the web, the definition for a battery switch system, it will say, ubiquitous around the world, hundreds of thousands of these robots have been deployed, but the first one was demonstrated in Yokohama on May 13th, 2009, and you'll say I was there. I think this is our first step in delivering on all of our commitments, on your commitment to the Kyoto Protocol, on our commitment to our children to build a better place for them, and on our collective commitment to sustainable transportation, be it if you're part of the industry or you're just a consumer like most of us. I want to thank you for coming here, and I want to get out of the way of this machine and make sure you actually see it working. Otherwise, you probably won't believe me. So with that, now you can take the podium, and we can start the demonstration if you want to. Thank you very much.
Thank you. I'll see you. Thank you.